Hi. Um, I'm excited to be here again at Open Source Summit North America, presenting how Guac can help you understand your most risky dependencies. Uh, who am I? My name is Nathan Levine. I'm an 11th grader in high school. I'm a software engineer at Kasari, and I've been contributing to Guac for about a year and a half now. In my free time, I love solving algorithms and practicing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So, what is Guac? Guac is a project that collects and organizes information about your software based on S-bombs you ingest. We take these S-bombs and create a graph, which you can then use to get a deeper understanding of your software. This allows us to find security vulnerabilities and in turn your most risky dependencies. So now that we have a basic understanding of the goal of Guac, let's understand this, the feature this talk is going to be focusing on. This feature is called the Next Actionable Critical Dependency. It's a mouthful, I know. But now two questions arise. First, what does it do? And second, why is it important? So we decided to take the guac graph that we generate based on the S-bombs you ingest to find your most critical and vulnerable dependencies so that you can predict, uh, no, I'm sorry, so you can allocate resources to ensure you stay secure. Um, this tool is meant to be used proactively so that you can predict and prevent vulnerabilities from being created in your dependencies that would are the most prone to attack and that would affect your organization the most. So you might have seen this image before. It's pretty famous. But I think this really applies to our use case because this package is extremely critical. If it has a vulnerability, your entire project topples. And it has a very high likelihood of having a vulnerability. Now, this package also is very also has a very high likelihood of having a vulnerability. But is that as critical? No. If the first package has a vulnerability, your entire infrastructure goes for a toss. If the second package has a vulnerability, only that single, single feature goes down. So now that we understand why this feature is important, let's understand what it does. So since this is a new feature, we've currently got a couple of metrics to rank your dependencies. The first of which is the number of dependents. So for example, if I have two dependencies, package A and package B, and package A has got 10 packages depending on it, and package B has one package depending on it, which is more critical. Package A, because more of your software depends on it. Um, you may be thinking that your organization values a certain functionality more than others, regardless of the number of dependents. Well, don't worry, we'll get back to that. And the second metric are open SSF scorecard scores. This is a scoring system to know what best practices are being followed in a project, or in this case, your dependency. And um, like I said, this is a newer feature, so we are thinking of adding more metrics in the future. So I think the best way to go about this is to explain it with an example. In this example, we've got a package with our repo, which depends on packages A and B. Package A depends on packages C and D. Package B depends on E and F. And package D and F depend on G. So packages A and B have one dependent, our repo. The repo depends on A and B. Packages C and D have two dependents. Our repo depends on A, which then depends on C and D. And packages E and F are similar. They also have two dependents. Pack our repo depends on B, which then depends on C and D. And package G has five dependents. The repo depends on A and B, which then depends on D and F, which then depends on G. Now, this is cool. We can know how critical a package is. Uh, for example, if I have a package with 500 dependents, we know it's a very critical target for attackers and that we may want to focus more on that package over another with a lot less dependents. But we also want to know how likely a package is to have a vulnerability. So we can use open SSF scorecard scores. Uh, this is a scoring system to know what best practices are being followed and the more best practices being followed, the lesser chance of a vulnerability cropping up. Uh, the scorecard scores in this example are displayed next to the nodes. But now we find an issue. 
We've got package G with five packages depending on it and a scorecard score of 7.2. And we've got package F with two packages depending on it and a scorecard score of 4.5. How do I know which is more risky? So to solve this, we have decided to come up with an upcoming feature uh, where we take all the metrics and group them into a single score so that it's easy for you to know what is your most risky package. So finding the risk for a project is actually pretty simple. You take the criticality and multiply by weight, then add it to likelihood, multiply by another weight. Now finding the criticality and likelihood at normalized values is a little more complicated. Uh, this is a modified sigmoid function on top of the open SSF criticality score algorithm developed by Rob Pike. So I'm not gonna explain this because it would take too long, but you can scan the QR code to go to the proposal, which explains it in detail. And so note that this algorithm does use weights to uh, prioritize between different metrics, and we are creating a default set of weights. But feel free to modify these values at any time uh, to suit your needs. And like I said before, you can set some values to be more important than others regardless of their score. So if your organization values a certain functionality more than another, you can set it and its dependencies to have the highest risk. Um, so let's go back to the same example. And uh, that should pop up. Uh, we can com co compute a combined score, combined risk score, based on number of dependents and scorecard score, or in this case, the criticality and likelihood, to find your risk. Now, the score is created with zero being the least risky and one being the most risky. So in this example, we've got package F with the highest, which is the most risky. And that is because of a low, really low scorecard score. The lower the scorecard score, the less best practice is being followed, meaning that it's more risky, so the higher the risk score. And that's all I have for you today. Thank you for coming.